And for more on this, let's go to Bruce Afrin. He's a public interest lawyer who teaches political and corporate uh, corruption law at Rutgers Law School. He's a constitutional expert and worked on campaign finance for Ralph Nader's presidential campaign. So you certainly, Bruce, know all about these issues. Uh, what do you think we can expect potentially this week when we finally get to read the Mueller report? Well, Eric, I think we're going to see the information about obstruction of justice. That's not going to get redacted. And I think we're going to see that there's a difference of opinion between some prosecutors. But when there's a difference of opinion, that means there's no crime that can be prosecuted. If you can look both ways and say it can go either way, then Mr. Mueller acted correctly in not bringing an indictment. And what about these allegations we heard from Lindsey Graham talking about, well, if he hears something wrong that Barr does, he has faith in, 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 in Barr. Do you think he'll play it straight or as the Democrats are accusing the attorney general of trying to, you know, hide stuff with the redactions? I would say two things. Bob Mueller is well regarded as a person of integrity, I think, by everyone on both sides. And I don't think Attorney General Barr has ever been criticized, you know, for his level-headedness and fairness. And I think that he has to redact because of grand jury minutes, there are confidential statements. It has to be redacted. Can you explain that a bit? Because he has come under criticism for that memo talking about uh, bringing charges against the President of the United States. But in terms of grand jury secrecy, by law, that has to be redacted, even to Congress? That must be redacted. It would be extraordinary that even Congress should see grand jury minutes or information still before a grand jury or that which came before it. You know, people, have, the, the critics have been saying, well, they think there's collusion, even though uh, Mueller came to the opposite conclusion. Tell us a bit about one, one specific meeting. It's the Trump Tower meeting in which Jared Kushner and Don Jr. were there and Paul Manafort, and they met with a Russian lawyer. And the critics are saying, well, that is collusion because they thought they were getting opposition dirt on Hillary Clinton. They're meeting with a, a woman who was a Russian lawyer who they thought represented the Russian government. That's in those emails. Why weren't charges brought potentially on that? Charges were not brought because nothing happened. One can meet with a Russian lawyer. One can have coffee with a Russian lawyer. One can have dinner with a Russian lawyer. It's not collusion. It's collusion if one illegally helps someone intervene in the election. While it may not seem very nice to try to get dirt on the opposition, that's not a crime. That's politics in America, and it's not barred by the federal elections laws. And when you talk about the obstruction of justice, what do you think we will see? Do you think we'll see that the president engaged in that? Others say, well, look, he, he had that Oval Office meeting with Sergey Lavrov saying that he, he fired uh, 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 the FBI director because he was a nutcase and it took the pressure off of Russia. Said that in an interview with Lester Holt. Uh, others say that the president has the right under the executive branch to uh, have decide who he has as personnel. Eric, I think what we have to do is look at what is obstruction of justice. It's really a secret, corrupt action that derails an investigation. When the president openly fires the FBI director as he has the constitutional power to do so for any reason, that is not obstruction. When he meets with James Comey to say, do we need to prosecute Mike Flynn for a single mistake in an otherwise blameless life, that's what a president does. That's not a corruption. And, that's not obstruction. And finally, 20 seconds. Do you think we'll see uh, anything on the alleged FISA abuses in this report? I don't know if it will be there, but it ought to be, because it's clear that the Obama administration did not disclose that the information to gain surveillance on Carter Page came from the Clinton campaign. That was a deception on the FISA court. It ought to be in the report. All right. We'll see if it is and see if, uh, as you say, and we'll get back to you to analyze it once we get the report. Great. Bruce Afrin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Eric.